Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the welcome to this second lecture by Terence Tao. I was told that the second day when we doubled the size of the the lecture, there was no way we could fill it, and as you can see, we almost filled it completely. So we are very pleased to see so many here. Each year when we have the Unsag lecture, we ask them in addition to give the Unsag lecture to give an additional lecture on a more specialized topic. And we are very pleased that Terence Tao accepted this, and he's now going to give his lecture on, as you can see, compressed sensing. So please, Terry. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. This is a okay, so um, this is, a, as I said, a, um, Helga said, a much more uh, specialized topic, more mathematical topic uh, than uh, the public lecture I gave uh, yesterday. Um, this is about a, a field which uh, has been sort of slowly developing for many decades and then exploded in the last four or five years. Um, it started out, uh, well, um, I, I came into this field from the area of signal processing, how to, to, to reconstruct uh, signals from, from measurements. Um, uh, but, uh, th th and, but this field has since developed uh, to many other areas. Um, I mean, there, there are just many applications now where <coughs> you have some data and you have some measurements, but you don't have enough measurements to reconstruct the data, or at least it, it doesn't look like you have enough measurements to, to figure out what the data is. But, um, if you, uh, but um, what compressed sensing is all about is that if you also know that your data has some additional structure, uh, it's not just arbitrary strings of numbers, but it's some sort of special data, then you can, you can actually um, uh, cheat somehow and reconstruct your data, even though you, don't, you shouldn't have enough, enough data and measurements to, uh, to, to reconstruct it. And this, this is the, the, the principle of what's now called compressed sensing that if you want to measure data, you, can, you often need much, many fewer measurements than were previously thought possible. Um, and this is, this is uh, very important for many applications in which measurement is, is, a very, is very expensive or, or very limited. Okay, so um, now I'm a pure mathematician, so I'll, I'll talk about some applications later, but um, um, I sort of approach this problem from a pure perspective. Um, and basically what we're doing is that we are revisiting linear algebra. Um, you know, the, uh, some, a very classical subject and one which is supposed to have been completely understood, you know, a century ago. Um, but there are some, some new, uh, new features uh, that we have, uh, you know, in, in, in the most classical problem in linear measurement, which is to solve AX equals B. So if you have taken a linear algebra class, you have seen this equation, I'm sure, many, many times, uh, more times than you want, probably. Um, no, so um, so th th this is the classic problem in linear algebra. You have some unknown vector, X. Um, an, an n-dimensional vector, maybe real or complex. Um, and this, is, this represents your data, maybe a signal, a sound wave, an image, um, maybe some uh, statistical variables. Um, there, there, there are many, many situations where you have an, a, a vector of unknowns, but you don't measure them directly. Um, you only measure, uh, you, you don't measure x, you measure b. Uh, and b is some, is some um, linear combination of your, of, of your, um, of your, um, of your signal. So for example, uh, you might have some sound wave, uh, but you don't know the value of the sound at every given point. Maybe um, uh, all you can do is that you can analyze it with uh, a, a, a Fourier transform. You, you take some spectral measurement, and you, you know a few Fourier coefficients of your, um, uh, of your signal. In that case, A would be some sort of Fourier matrix, and your Fourier coefficients you measure will be um, A times X. All right. So, um, all right, so you have, you have um, an n-dimensional set of uh, data set. You are taking M measurements. Um, and um, you are, okay, and your measurements are linear combinations of your original data, so, that, so your measurements B are the form AX, where A is uh, some M by N matrix, uh, which we assume to be non-degenerate, so you're not making the same measurements over and over again, each measurement is, is, is independent of the, of the other measurements. So you know A, and you know B, and you want to solve for X. Okay, this is, this is a classic problem in linear algebra. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, now that's the, that's the ideal problem. Um, in practice, you have more, uh, you, you, um, you, don't, you never get perfect measurements in real life. You, um, in, 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 um, in the real world, you don't actually measure AX. You measure AX plus, plus Z, for example, where Z is some noise, some error in your measurements, round off error, measurement error, instrument error, there's all, there's all kinds of possible errors. Um, or maybe, um, some of your measurements are just, are, have been corrupted. You're, you're maybe sending these measurements over some network, like the internet. Um, and some of the, the measurements you take, have, they have just uh, been lost or, or corrupted or um, 
uh, in some cases, you might think that there's, there's, there is some, um, some adversary. This is a, um, uh, the, 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 you're, you're in some, some wartime environment, and, and some of your, your data has, has, has been jammed. Um, and so uh, the way you model that is that your signal is now AX plus E, where E is, uh, is, a, is a sparse vector. Maybe 10% maybe of your signal, of your data, has, uh, of your measurements has been corrupted. So um, you have a vector which is mostly zero, but 10% has been completely uh, uh, ruined. And so all you see is AX plus E. Um, and just to give you the, the idea of the scale of things, in the applications we have in mind, particularly in imaging, um, the, uh, the, the number of measurements we have and the number of uh, uh, the size of the data is, is reasonably large, between 1,000 and a million in practice. Um, so uh, definitely something that, that you need a computer to deal with. Right? Uh, it's beyond uh, just uh, 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 what we can just specify like pen and paper. OK, so that's the classical problem. And the classical theory is, uh, is, is very well understood. Um, you have m measurements and n unknowns. So you have, you're solving m equations in n unknowns, ax equals b. And for now, let's, let's not worry about noise or corruption. If you're solving ax equals b, um, we know that if you have more equations than unknowns, uh, that's one of the first things you learn. If you have more equations than unknowns, you can, you can, solve, you can solve your system. If you, have three equations in two, if you have two or more equations in two unknowns, and it's non-degenerate, uh, then you can solve the problem by, say, Gaussian elimination. There are, there are many, many al algorithms to, to, uh, to, uh, to solve A equals B. Okay? For example, if your A is a square matrix, you just, uh, and you can just invert it. And there are many ways to find the inverse. And, and, and then you, you can, so th that's when you're determined. If you have more measurements, then you're overdetermined. You have, even, you have more equations than you need to solve the problem. And so it becomes even easier to solve in some sense. Okay, so um, it's, well, it's well understood what to do when you have more measurements than um, degrees of freedom, at least when there's no noise. Now, um, when you have uh, less measurements uh, than data, so if you have, say, uh, a 10 dimensional space of data, but you're, you're only taking eight measurements, um, that's, uh, you, you're only cutting down the, the degrees of freedom by eight, there's still two degrees of freedom left, um, then your problem is underdetermined. Under and uh, you can't solve for A equals B exactly. Um, what happens now is that X uh, lives on some subspace. So um, originally, X lives in some n dimensional space of data. Every equation, every measurement you take cuts down the dimension that x can live in by one, and, then, and so if you're determined or overdetermined, you cut it all the way down to a point, and you know exactly what x is. But if you have fewer measurements, if you only have, say, uh, three unknowns but only two equations, you still have one degree of freedom, then x lies on some line or some plane or some subspace. So you don't, uh, when you have not enough measurements, you don't solve for x exactly. You have x in some, in some subspace. Um, but in many cases, you still want to get some answer. You know, uh, you say, what's, what's, okay, so X is in the subspace. What's your best guess for what X should be? Uh, and um, in many cases, you expect uh, um, X to be something of small energy. Like if, if, if X is some sort of um, noise vector, um, it's, um, it's more likely that noise is small than noise is large. So um, what, what is often done is least squares minimization. And this is done all over the place. It's very classical. You take, um, you, uh, among all the x's which solve a, x equals b, you, you find the, um, the x that minimizes the, the energy, the L2 norm, the sum of squares of the, um, of the coefficients. And that's very classical. The reason why we choose least squares rather than least cubes or least fourth powers or whatever is because there is a, it's a very, uh, there's a very clean formula for what the uh, minimal x is. So the, there's, there's, there's always a unique minimum x, x sharp. The, the, uh, among all solutions to the problem, a x equals b, the one that minimizes the O2 norm is actually given by what's called the pseudo, pseudo inverse of A applied to B, and it's given by this, this formula. And this is, uh, in some sense, the, and in many applications, this is the best guess for what X is. Okay, and so this is classical. People use this all the time. Uh, okay, and in many cases, it, it's, it's quite effective. Um, 